today. Are you looking to get better at Victoria 3? Are you looking to take your average Victoria game to the whole next level? I've got 100 hours in the game and I can take most medium to large powers to number one great power status in the first 20, 25 years of the game. Well, these few tips are gonna take your game all the way. First of all, it's best to concentrate your manufacturing into one centralized manufacturing state. If you wanna find the right state, find a construction sector or administrative building and sort by number of peasants to one that's got the most peasants. These are potentially your employees. So in this case, Kiev or Kursk are the most concentrated for Russia. Have a look through your nation, click on the states, find the one that's most populous. A minimum of half a million peasants is gonna make this strategy the most ideal. All you do from this point is assign a decree for the manufacturing industry to get a 20% boost to manufacturing. And then all the manufacturing builds are gonna be located in this district. This is primarily steel, train industries, food is good, glass is good. You get the idea, right? So any kind of manufacturing product that requires a raw resource to turn into a manufactured product is classed as manufacturing. So therefore you get the bonus on the manufacturing. This is very intense when it comes down to the manpower and the required to fill them, particularly when it comes to mid game. In the early game, it's not a big problem because you have lots of access to labor. And then late game, there might be a period where it maxes out the region and you can't get any more population from it. What you do in the meantime though, is also add a further decree of greener grass campaign. This will cause an increase of migration of pops from around your nation, as well as unemployed, or even abroad internationally, to come to this region and work here and fill out these factories for manufacturing. This is an important strategy, because once again, you are taking advantage of the 20% manufacturing in one state. Decrees aren't cheap, they cost 100 authority, and to top that off, as well, you get to take advantage of the economy of scale. What is the economy of scale? This is super important. If you build more than one size of a factory or a resource gathering building inside of a state, you gain this bonus. Can you see this throughput 1% from the economy of scale? You go into here, you can see the economy scale scales up to a maximum of 20 because that is your base value. You can though get a maximum of 40. It is under production. The first one is mechanized workshops. For the most part, you can get that in the first few years of the game, plus 10 to your economy of scale. And the next one is slightly later, maybe 1870s-ish, another 20% bonus, adding a maximum of 30% to your economy of scale. Oh, I was wrong. It's not an extra 20%, it's an extra 30. So you can do double your amount and you can have a maximum of 50 economy of scale. To take advantage of that full economy of scale, you would have, in this case, need to have 51 rye farms. The one just gains you no throughput bonus and two will gain you the plus one. So 51 will give you the maximum throughput economy of scale bonus with all the technologies included. Rushing these technologies, particularly if you're a main industrial producer or resource gathering, is gonna make a big difference. Get this, guys. This applies to most of the buildings in Victoria 3. Administrative buildings, can you see that? 1% throughput, see that there? And you can see the default research is capped at 21. It even applies, strangely enough, to universities. You wouldn't even think university would benefit from economy of scale, but it does. Super critical construction sectors. They benefit from the economy of scale, but not from the direct bonus other buildings do. They gain a bonus to construction efficiency, which is a flat percentage bonus to the construction overall. More technologies will let you get this higher by allowing you to expand your construction industry in one set region. So in this case, the maximum cap is currently 15. You see that's from urbanization and urban planning, but there'll be more that you get later game that let you stack higher and higher, letting you take advantage of more state construction efficiency. It is important that you have a dedicated state for construction, or maybe two, or maybe three. If you're ever in a situation, you've got to keep expanding it over and over and over and over again to take advantage of more construction efficiency bonus. If you go into buildings, then go into construction. It's always crucial to take advantage of the most state construction efficiency bonus. In this case, the more advanced building structures, or frames in this case, will gain a higher bonus to state construction efficiency. At the start of the game, iron frame buildings give you a 4%, so double the amount, then 6%, for, and then the art welder buildings late game, an extra 8%. You can stack additionally efficiency to build individual buildings faster. The next question is going to be, how many construction sectors am I going to need to officially expand my economy, but also by not losing money? So my advice is take care of your economy first. So max out your taxation, assign your decrees. And then if you've got extra authority, you can spend it on, let's say, 
uh, things that are going to give you extra income. So you can see our income is very healthy now. We'll go five speed for a little while. And you can see we're in about 70,000 a month. If you look at the construction sector, you can have a little look at uh, how much it costs. It's roughly about, say, about 3,000. Round it up for each additional construction sector. My advice is just play this by ear. Find a decent estate that's got a decent amount of peasants. In this case, it looks like we're going to max this one out. And then we're going to go basically five speed and construct these construction sectors. We'll go for iron frame buildings as well to max it out. And as you can see, after you build each individual construction sector, if you look really closely at your income, it will take a dive as the construction goods go up massively, as well as having to pay the bureaucracy of these extra workers that are gonna be working in these construction sectors. If you hover over this number two, you can actually see the amount increasing. So here we go, constructing more and more and more. And the income's still pretty good at the moment. Be aware you're not currently building anything right now, so your income's gonna shoot up massively. But that will change as you filled your building queue. So in this case, you might as well fill the next one too. Find another area that's got lots and lots of pops. Go and construct those ones too. Okay, we've reached a certain point now that we're into a minus number. So we should stop building construction sectors. So you don't need any more construction sectors. So let's just say we wanted to build silk in the Caucasus. And you can see now our income now is a minus number. Only a, a white minus number which means our losses are only small compared to our overall income. So for the most part, if you're expanding your GDP, actively deficit spending is going to be advantageous to you. Because remember, it's just to remember, as your GDP expands, your access to credit pool expands with it as well. And the more credit you've got, the more you can spend into your deficit. So this is kind of how modern economies work. You constantly deficit spending. Now, however, where do you reach the point where you're spending too much? So if we were to drop the taxes down a little bit here, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. There we go. The number has now turned red. Now, this is telling you you are really eating into either your credit or your gold reserves. And it won't be very long until you've eaten through them all until you've got no money left. So my advice to you is work at a minor deficit, whatever you feel the most comfortable with, and actively keep working it down. What will more than likely happen is as time goes on, you'll gain more and more money and this number will increase and then you'll be you finding yourself building more construction sectors. That way you can constantly keep making your economy wider and wider and wider and wider as you get the right amount. There might be a certain sweet spot where you get a certain amount of construction efficiency. We found that a lot of the meta people is around about 500 construction points. At that point, it's not really efficient to keep building more construction sectors. In that case, you might want to hop into your income and start lowering taxes to try and make your pops more happy and make it easy to access uh, an easier standard of a living. Speaking of standard of living, I'm getting revolts all the time, Gabe. They're always upset. How do I uh, sort out the standard of living? How do I make it easier for my pops? So there's two ways of doing this. I'm going to show the way that's kind of less easy. So you go into here, standard of living, your middle mouse over, let's say, the lower strata, the lower class, and then you've got this amount here. This is the number you kind of work with here, plus 12%. So basically, they're living... So these pops are paying an average of 12% more based on the base price of the goods required. So they're kind of finding it's difficult to get by. If you hover over, you can see the full breakdown or the goods they're purchasing. So as you can see here, grain makes up the most of their expenditure. As you can see, as they get more disposable income, you can see they'll purchase more luxury goods. So you got grain here that's not too bad, liquor's not too bad, but then wood's a problem to heat their home. Clothes and furniture and fabric and services and groceries and fish and tobacco, all of those ones are incredibly expensive and they're struggling to bit buy. My advice is work from the top and then work down. In this case, I would work more on wood. As Russia, wood's easy because you've got it plentiful and you've got bonuses across the forests of Russia. In this case, you can work on wood. Then clothing and furniture kind of standard as well you can make manufacturing for that and go from there my advice to you though is that don't particularly work on this to begin with my advice is just kind of focus on your industry making money and then when you start to find you've got turmoil or revolutions brewing kind of like you can work pro more proactively towards that and that way you'd have to worry about that my advice though is don't look at it in there go into your markets click on your details here uh click on staple goods and then sort by the market price. And then in this case, you can see what's the most expensive. Groceries, uh, wood, chairs, clothes. Some of these aren't goods that people tend to need for the, their standard of living, for instance, services. It can be an issue, but for the most part, it really isn't. There's not really a way, way of making it cheaper, to be honest with you. So I won't worry too much about that. When it comes down to fabric too, it's, it, it, it will affect their standard of living, but overall, it's kind of something you use more for manufacturing and paper is a bureaucracy thing. But everything else seems to be straightforward. Just work from the top to bottom. So in this case, make more groceries, 
uh, chop down more wood. Furniture factories, clothing factories. And this is just a really easy way of meeting your needs of your citizens. And tend to be, for the most part, the lower... The poor people, the peasants, are the ones that get most upset by these easy staple goods. If you want to work on more that upper class people, you can go on your luxury items. You can see how easy these are to access. There's a way you can tune this and make it easier too. If you go into your buildings and focus primarily on sorting out the lower strata first, we tend to make up the most of the population anyway. So in this case, work on making hand-sewn clothes, but don't worry about producing luxury items. You tend to find that luxury items are better to sell off anyway. So in this case, just work with that. Don't change to uh, luxury items just stick with your uh, basic clothing until you've got their needs sorted. then if you want to work on more middle or upper class people you can do that as well same applies to the furniture industry as well you make your basic furniture here and then here you make your luxury furniture once again just focus on your basic to begin with and uh, because you'll produce more of that item if you notice when you hover over you can see that you're producing less standard furniture to make luxury furniture so my advice is just focus on the easy stuff first before moving on to the more advanced stuff this will make it a lot easier to meet the standard of living for particularly poor people before you work on more advanced areas later on so as I mentioned before about manufacturing, you can locate, locate it in one specific state. But you can do the same for resource gathering too. Click on the map, look at overview, and look for areas that have benefits to agricultural output, mining output, or woods. For instance, somewhere up here, you've got a wood logging advantage. So if you want to like centralize your production to one state, you can do the same thing again. Right click, focus on resource gathering or agricultural output, and then focus it within that specific region. You might find it a little bit easier at the start of the game to have something along the coastline. That way you don't have to build railways, and then you can just focus on port if you're wanting to delay like the industrial revolution towards uh trains or railways if your industry is lacking and it's all coming crumbling down this can happen mid to late game the easiest fix is just hop into your primary building and subsidize those key items what are the most key items to keep all the industry rolling it's going to be your tools it's going to be your engines such as your trains and it's also going to be steel if these goods become too expensive all the other goods required for it will become too expensive therefore become un inefficient so now my advice is to subsidize those take initially take the loss fix your industry and then once your industry has been fixed particularly after a bad war you can remove the subsidies and then your industry will work nicely but otherwise there might be a stagnant phase that you just can't get out of and you might have to subsidize just to get your industry rolling again when it comes down to making money my advice is depending on the size of your nation focus on one specific good to make money if you're a major power you can branch out into a lot of areas but if you want one specific cash crop my advice is just produce that one item for instance opium and tea and co coffee and tobacco are easy and if you're playing as a minor power if you mass produce these you'll be making a lot of money by exporting them around the world that also applies to some manufacturing goods as well for instance if, you, if you're trying to for instance uh, making luxury items it's which uh, such as making uh, luxury clothing you can do that as austria quite effectively keep in mind if you want to focus on it, you need to be out producing the rest of the world. To do that, you need to look at researches that you've not already got. In this case, you can see mechanized tools. In this case, you want to tech towards that direction to have an advantage on efficiency and production. So therefore, you can keep your goods super cheap and mass produce them and send them out to the rest of the world. If other nations start to out produce you, then there's no point really. In that case, you're not going to be making money from that particular item. So you have to tech in the direction of the specific item you're going for. As a large nation and most of the great powers at the start of the game, it's not a big deal because you can branch out into a lot of areas but if you are a small nation for instance like persia it might be more worthwhile to focus on one thing like opium and try and make money from that before branching out and actually raising the industrial revolution one thing i've found it is better to focus more on a manufactured good let's say luxury furniture or luxury clothing than it is to focus on just one specific cash crop so for instance in my games before i've tried to just produce lots and lots of coal as prussia which is horrendously effective it's really good at exporting loads of them and it's actually quite fun too however you tend to find you reach a limit of your port capacity and you don't have enough convoys to export and then you kind of reach peak coal and you can't really go any further now however a luxury item a manufactured item, for instance, uh, you can export that for more money, make more money because of it, and you don't really clog up all your ports by using all your convoys. So it is kind of better to produce a manufactured good, which you can sell at a higher profit and less volume, than it is specific to mass produce that, say, coal, for instance, as Prussia or or France. This is a mistake that a lot of players run into. You can break your supply chains 
if you mass change all your production methods simultaneously. If you hover over them, it actually tells you like you've not got the qualifications for specific manufacturers or you lack the equipment for it. My honest advice is don't mass change them all at one specific time because you will run into a situation where the most common thing is you'll run low on tools or coal or raw iron. Change them one by one, for instance, at five speeds and just see how the market adapts to those changes. If you change all of them at one go, you might clog up one of the markets like tools, make them too expensive and the whole of the supply chains break apart. Part. make those changes and adjustments nice and slowly don't try and do them all at once this is an issue you run into mid to late game and as a big nation like russia or china or some of the other nations like united states becomes a big issue because your population isn't very large at the very start of the game is you run into a point where you're expanding your industry into areas you've not actually got peasants the game gives you no tool tips to remind you there's not enough employees or peasants in a region to actually fill the factories there so you find yourself like building a steel manufacturing where there's no peasants there and they're not filling that factory therefore producing Producing the goods so it runs into a lot of issues now you can fix this problem short term by going for greener grass however the migration is quite low and you will not gain a lot of people initially so it'll be a very slow grind to build those numbers back up again and when it comes down to the late game and it comes under population there are a few key things to remember. First of all, women's legal rights. Going for suffrage and women in the workforce is a big deal because you will increase your workforce ratio by 10 and 15%, therefore giving you access to more workers. Next up, healthcare systems. Less people are dying of mortality. So therefore, you have overall a higher growing population to access and tap into more labor. And finally, migration people coming from abroad to live in your country you go into the outliner and you look at the interest group of intelligentsia the final bonus you get is propagandists see this one here so if you make them super happy you'll get the migration attraction plus 50 percent this is massive this is huge okay it's probably one of the most op bonuses you get from interest groups it's basically giving you greener grass throughout the entirety of your nation it is mad strong it's something to think about because in the late game when population does cap out particularly in some of the maybe medium-sized nations like austria prussia france uk which don't have an unlimited population like some of the other nations uh, it is going to be really worthwhile to get a lot of that attraction to try and build your labor force up from the outside when it comes to diplomatic plays relationships are important diplomatic lens diplomatic actions improve relationships make sure if you are in a region of the world that another nation has powers into. For instance, if you're Prussia and you want to be getting a leadership contest over the Austria, you want to build relations with Russians and France and maybe less so the United Kingdom. Because in this case, you're going to be in their spheres of influence. You want to be on their side so they can back you or not be against you in a war situation. Building relationships, particularly on, is super, super, super important. Particularly if you want trade relationships and trade for certain items. If I want to have early access to opium, maybe it's a good idea to build a relationship with the East India Company or Ching, for instance. But then again, if, what if I don't want to build relationships and get those resources by trading? What if I want to get them and seize them myself? So for instance, let's say I want access to opium. So we go into the markets. For instance, we want to look about opium. So in this case, first aid, opium. Or for instance, if we go abroad and look at their production. Or for instance, if we go to, we know somewhere that does produce opium, let's say Afghanistan. Opium, here we go, opium plantations. Here we found opium. You can click on opium itself. So you go Western Afghanistan is the fourth biggest producer online. Go into the Afghan market and then you can click on potential for opium market. So you can see the opium belt here uh, going west from Persia all the way east through India into the western tip of China. So let's say you want opium. That's something you're going to need for your armies and for first aid and for your care of your armies. So in this case, you want to expand into these specific regions to get access to opium. So this is production and this is potential. You can do this with any items late game, such as rubber, oil, cotton. There's lots of items you want to expand for. And let's say that I want to expand to get access to opium, but I want to do it diplomatically with trade i want to do it by force and actually controlling the trade directly in this case you can go into your diplomacy overview declare an interest we've already got an interest in this case in persia and in this case you could let's say conquer this state keep a close eye on who you're going to upset being in this specific region so like it's going to be the ottomans and that's pretty much it really because these are all minor powers in this case, you're going to wait to see what's going to happen. If you are a massive major power and they don't want to confront you, 
more than likely they will not pop a fight. They might just give up immediately. And then in this case, you can push into the opium regions, build up the opium there and build and make your successful economy from there. I think what's really important is you actively, when you're missing out on a certain resource, it's always going to be better if you want to manufacture it locally. In that case, that's a good example of when you could do it. Guys, that was my list of tips. Is there anything I missed out on? Anything I could have dig digged a little bit deeper into? Please let me know in the comments below. If this video did it for you, then this one is the next one. I think you'll enjoy it. I picked this one for you.